As part one of Heart of Darkness continues, Marlow travels to the European continent to seek a job with the company. His aunt makes an introduction and he applies for a position made vacant when a Danish captain is killed in a scuffle with the natives. In a flash forward, Marlow tells how he later finds the captain's remains in the jungle. In the company offices, Marlow looks over a large shining map, color-coded according to colonial powers. The map is full of red, the British Empire. But he's headed into the yellow, dead in the center, to Belgian-held Congo. Ushered into a room to sign some papers, two knitting women give him an eerie feeling. They seemed uncanny and fateful, like they were guarding the door of darkness. Marlow's examined by a doctor. He measures his head and asks, ever any madness in your family? It would be interesting for science to watch the mental changes that take place in people out there. When Marlow says goodbye to his aunt, she is triumphant. So proud that the company is sending such a gifted emissary of light to wean those ignorant millions from their horrid ways. Upon my word, says Marlow, she made me quite uncomfortable. Marlow certainly knows that the companies run efficiently for profit, not to improve the population. Locating the story in the Congo, Conrad indicts King Leopold II's depravity, theft, and barbarism, while leaving room to praise the real work being done in the British Empire. This accounts in part for the difficulty of this novella that both condemns and condones colonialism.